Good afternoon slash evening, everybody. We've got ourselves some more breaking news, and this one is not a coach. This one does not concern the coaching staff. This is a player. That's right. We have some breaking player news. The Seattle Seahawks are extending one of their outgoing free agents on a one-year deal. So let's talk about it. Let's digest it. Let's interpret it. There are definitely a few different layers to this decision. So let's start with the basics, uh, the minimum. Phil Haynes, guard, has reached an agreement on a one-year deal. That one-year deal is worth $4 million, could be worth up to $5 million with incentives. So Phil Haynes, back in Seattle for 2023, one year, $4 million, up to $5 million with incentives. So there are a few different things that need to be talked about here. So first of all, as I said in my off-season video a couple days ago, I wanted Phil Haynes back. I did. And honestly, I think regardless of our plan this off-season, whether or not we're going for it, bringing Phil Haynes back is a good idea. So on that level, I got no problem with it. I got no issue with it. Sounds good to me. Phil Haynes is back in Seattle. Now, $4 million, that means a couple of different things. First of all, that's a little more than I thought he was going to get. I thought that, because if we're being honest here, Phil Haynes didn't play great last year. I thought he might get like a little bit more than the minimum. I thought he might get anywhere from $1.5 to $2 million. But um, when you give him $4 million, up to 5 with incentives, that tells me you are planning on on him starting. So that's kind of the second layer here. Not only are we bringing back Phil Haynes, we're bringing him back with the intent of him starting at guard. And because Damian Lewis has kind of solidified himself on the left side, it's probably going to be at the right side. Now, I don't know if that's ideal for, for Phil Haynes, but that's kind of another aspect to this deal. He can play both sides. He can play left or right. That gives him extra value and it's clear that with this contract agreement that we've come to with Phil Haynes, we're willing to reward that extra value with extra money. Because, honestly, the way that Phil Haynes played last year, when he gave you approximately slightly below league average play across less than 500 snaps and then got hurt, that strikes me more as like a $2 million a year player. But we have recognized the fact that he can play both sides of the line, which we clearly value, and I think any team would value that, and we also say, we think you are good enough to be our starting right guard going forward. Now, the other layer of significance here, and this is, to me, the unequivocal good news, Gabe Jackson's done. There is no way you're going to give Phil Haynes four million bucks and then say, we're going to keep Gabe Jackson too, and Phil Haynes is going to be backing him up. That doesn't make any sense. If we had given Phil Haynes the minimum or a little more than the minimum, then it would have been conceivable <clears throat> to keep Gabe Jackson. That would have been on the table, but there's no way it happens now. You're not going to bring back Phil Haynes on this contract and then say, ah, we're just going to put him behind Gabe Jackson and play him like 20 snaps a game. No, there's no way. So Gabe Jackson is gone. Now, most of the money that we're going to save from the release of Gabe Jackson is going to go to pay Phil Haynes, which I wasn't really expecting but if you are planning on having Phil Haynes be your starter at right guard, it's fine. Because if it wasn't Phil Haynes, it was going to have to be somebody else that you either signed or drafted. And that was going to cost money. If you decide you trust Phil Haynes to be your starting right guard, then you don't have to spend that money on a free agent or a, a draft pick to bring them in to start. So it all kind of comes out pretty close to even in the end. Now, <clears throat> here's the question. The ultimate question at the core of this is Phil Haynes good enough to be a starting right guard in the NFL and can the Seahawks work with him being the starting right guard for their offensive line? Now, based off what we saw last year, he's playable. He's not bad. He's not a bad player necessarily. I think he was a little disappointing. I thought he was going to play I was hoping he was going to outstrip Gabe Jackson in 2022. He didn't. He played slightly better than Gabe Jackson. Fractionally better. 
not significantly better. Now, you want to go back to 2021, he is, his grades were a lot better, but he also only played 136 snaps. It's a small sample size. Granted, Phil Haynes' whole career has been a small sample size. He hasn't played that much. So, we still got stuff to find out about this dude. Um, I will say this. An NFL offensive line can easily survive having one weak link. Or, I don't want to say weak link, but a not strong link, right? Um, you look at the Seahawks offensive line, there are a few things going on here. One, we are expected to have really good play at left tackle and right tackle and left guard in 2023. And we have the assets and the clear need to go out and get a blue chip center. So if those four positions are rock solid, which it looks like they have a real good chance to be, then Phil Haynes' job as right guard, which is the easiest position on the line, becomes trivial. So, that's okay. I got no problem with that. Um, I will say this, if you just watched the most recent Super Bowl, you saw two offensive lines that didn't really have those weaknesses. Like, you saw two offensive lines built out of elite-level players. Some people are going to look at that and go, hey, we need to do that, and they're not going to be terribly excited about this deal, I don't think. But Phil Haynes, he's not a bad player. And honestly, maybe there isn't a huge difference between Phil Haynes and the starting uh, right guard on the Chiefs, the um, the Ohio State guy whose name escapes me at the moment. Maybe not. Maybe there isn't a big difference there. Maybe that guy just looks better because he gets to play next to Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson. Or, excuse me, Creed Humphrey and Joe Thune. But um, I, um, I don't know. I like bringing Phil Haynes back. I'm okay with at least giving him the opportunity to start. I understand the money because of his versatility. But, um, I don't know. I, I, the only hang-up I have here is Phil Haynes was a guy who I kind of expected big things from in 2022. And it didn't really happen. Now, that may have had more to do with Austin Blythe than Phil Haynes. <laughs> That's very possible. Again, I mean, we're comparing... Phil Haynes to a guy who got to play next to guys like Creed Humphrey, guys like uh, Jason Kelsey. So maybe getting a better center on his left is going to help him a lot. Maybe getting better play from the other offensive linemen on the team is going to help a lot. That's all possible. So maybe we'll find out something better about Phil Haynes this season if we get better a better crew around him. Maybe he'll end, he'll end up being as good as those guys. But... um. Yeah, that's the uh, news of the day. Let me know what you guys think down below. I'm pretty ambivalent on it. It's fine. I um, would have hoped it would have been a little bit less, but it's also not really significant. We're, we're talking about, you know, a couple million bucks here or there. Um, that's totally fine with a guy like Phil Haynes to me. The main concern probably has to be him getting hurt because his whole career he's battled injuries and now we're just sitting here hoping he can make it through a full season because when you pay a right guard four million bucks, you are hoping they can play the full season. It's not a position that attracts the most highly paid players. So four million dollars for a right guard is not trivial. All right, so let me know what you guys think down below. Um, that Those are all the angles. The best news to me, Gabe Jackson's done. There's no way we bring him back after giving Gabe uh, Phil Haynes this money. That to me is the best news. And look, I've been a big Phil Haynes fan at various points in his career. So maybe he'll become the player I was hoping years ago. All right, see you guys later. Go Hawks.